Some years ago, we started having a series of conversations with some of my friends in Latin America. Through an amazing process of revival, we saw probably millions of people coming to Christ. But at the same time, we were seeing our nations is still in a mess, an amazing level of corruption, injustice, the level of poverty. We start challenging ourselves, and we start comparing the dynamics, the style of life that was going on in the community that we were calling church, and the manifestation of, of it in the community. What was the, the impact at that time that people were having in their daily life? And we come to the conclusion that something was really wrong, that if we continue in that way, we will never be fulfilled the main purpose of the Great Commission, that is to see nations being discipled. And particularly myself, I start asking God, if there is something new ahead, if there will be a new way of doing things, God, I'm ready to be challenged. So 10 years ago, I was in Buenos Aires, and I was ready to preach. I have three preachings in a row that Sunday. And in the first meeting, I was sitting there, and something prompted from the Spirit in my heart, a question from God. And God asked me, Victor, what do you have in front of him, of you? What is in front of you. When I look and I said, Lord is the people, is the members of the church. Probably there are some visitors coming today. And he asked me why they are here. What is the main reason? What is the priority that they are here? And I said, Lord, probably they are the majority of them they are looking for satisfaction of certain area of need. Some of them are looking for healing. Other ones that have some economical problem and asking for your blessing. Other ones are seeking for a word of directions to their life. And then God asked me, Victor, and who is going to reach their needs? Who is going to satisfy their needs? I said, you, Lord. And he asked me, you're sure? I said, yes. And he asked me, Victor, uh, if I'm going to satisfy these people, what are you doing on the platform? I said, well, Lord, I'm supposed to be a channel. I'm supposed to be your word, to bring your word. God will have an altar calling to the needs, calling people to come with their needs for prayer. Lord, this is working. People are being healed. People are being transformed. They receive consolation. And he told me, Victor, you, you asked me to challenge you about the church, and I'm challenging you. I have been with these people. I'm with them every day, 24-7, all the time. And, and you're thinking that in your little meeting, you are going to satisfy their need when I was not able to do it the rest of the week. Victor, something is going wrong. I'm with these people every day. I'm with them all the time. I have the power, the capacity to satisfy them. But they are trapped in a system. They are trapped in, an, in a way where they are not finding that satisfaction. In the next meeting, God asked me, Victor, are you a good preacher? He said, yes, Lord, I'm a good preacher. I'm, God, I'm, look, I'm going all around the world. The church choose me because I'm, well in, I'm good in what I'm doing. Uh, why are you asking me that? Because, Victor, if you are not able to equip the people, to enable them so that they can reach the potential that they have in me, you will become a failure. You can have thousands of people in the temple. You can develop an amazing ministry. But if the life of the believer is not relevant in their daily life, you are a failure. In the next meeting, God asked me, Victor, in the setting today of the church, how the things are going on, how the meeting is going on, who is the person that will receive more satisfaction? So, well, Lord, the scripture said that it's more blessed to give than to receive. So probably the person that will be more satisfied will be myself. And then God asked me, Victor, how much of the resources, of the financial resources, the human resources, the time that you are spending, the programs of the church, are used to maintain this structure? So I said, well, probably over 70% of the resources that we have are used to maintain this structure. Victor, you have to understand that the foundation of this structure is selfishness. This is more for, more for you than for the people. This will be more a blessing for you than for the people. And if you continue doing the things in the same way, you will never be able to see the outworking of my kingdom. 
I said, God, you are ruining me. Why are you doing this to me? And he said, well, you asked me to challenge you about the future of the church. Some years later, I was here in the city of London, in this place, by Monument. And I was having a coffee just a few yards from here. And I was reflecting about the church and the state of the church. And I was asking God, God, the church is fragmented. It's so divided in denominations, doctrine, theology, language, different types of liturgy. And for me, it was looking like a puzzle. And I asked God, God, how we are going to put the piece together? If there is a final picture of, of the church, it will be easy to put it together. And God told me, there is a final picture, as in, is in the Bible. So I felt, to go, I felt to go back to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, in verse 9. It says that the angel came to John and said to John, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. This is after the wedding. It's after the church was presented, perfect, without wrinkle and a spawn. And clearly God told me, this is the final picture. And there, there is this description of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And it's described with all these characteristics, the foundations, the walls, the doors. And God made me reflect in two things. Uh, one is in chapter 16, he's talking about the structure that rule in the new Jerusalem that will rule the final picture of the church. And there is a geometric formula that said that the wide, the length, and the height is the same. That is the structure of the cube. So that the structure that was ruling the New Jerusalem, the expression of the final picture of the church is a cube. A few days later, I decided to go to a, an art shop and I bought these different cubes and I returned home. So I decided to cut the cube from the angles to the center and I cut it. And when I cut the cube, I obtained six pyramids. And something, a conviction come to my heart. This is the perversion of the cube. Is the pyramid structure, is the mediation structure, is the hierarchical structure that was ruling. And I started looking to the teachings of Jesus, to the way that he manifested to his disciples, the encouragement that they gave, he gave to them, the moment that he gave to them authority, when he told them the things that I did, you will do it, and even greater things. And when he declared, and the apostles declared that the church is built up upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. And you start seeing that the manifestation of leadership in the early church was not a hierarchical leadership, was not a top leadership, was a bottom-up leadership, creating foundation where the church will stand, where the believer will stand to be able to grow up, to be able to mature, to be able to exercise the authority in the calling and in the gifting that God gave to each one of them. And for me, that is the challenge that we are facing today, that we have to go to that final picture. We start to start looking what we have today and what is the challenge of today to start coming closer to that time where the church will express that final picture. Coming out of the pyramid, coming out of the hierarchical structure, coming out of top-up leadership into servant leadership, into bottom-up leadership, into new expression where the church will be not confined to a world, to an institution, to a kind of organization, where the church will be people, where two or three in my name come together, there I will manifest my presence. And from that on, I started a journey to come out of the pulpit, to come out of the, what we will call the institutional church, and to recover the vision of the kingdom that is to enable people, to capacitate people, to equip people, to embrace the calling and the purpose of God to their life, to become effective for the kingdom individually and together in everyday life.